you have kind of a bit of a situation, right, at receiver. How did that maybe get better today with some guys coming back? And how do you feel about that position overall right now? Uh, we definitely need to build some depth in that room. You know, we got guys coming back off some injuries that'll help us. I think it's a great opportunity. You know, it's a great opportunity for us to, to see what these young kids can do. We got some young wideouts that are very talented and explosive, and they're going to get a chance. Uh, you know, if they prove it in practice, they can do it. They can do it in the game, so they're going to get a chance early to show what they can do. How, in your experience coaching this offense, how steep is the learning curve for a true freshman, even uh, if they arrive in January? It's steep, but by no stretch of the imagination would we be that hard-headed. If that was going to be detrimental to a kid, being able to go out there and function and be able to play with, you know, uh, with his speed, then we would definitely scale back anything we had to. We're not the we're not an organization that's going to say this is what we do. You got to figure it out. Like we're going to maximize the, the athletic traits of our kids and let them play freely. How do you see guys moving forward today uh, after Saturday's scrimmage? And, and how has this team been at that about you know just taking the teaching from a even if it won't be the best day? Uh, so far, they've been great. You know, all adversities that's, that's come our way as a team and as an offense. Are, these kids are unbelievable. They're unbelievable workers. I think they trust what uh, you know our process, that Coach Rule, our coach, you know Coach Rule's process. I think they trust what we're doing, how we do it. So they bounced back today, and they were ready to go. Did you have any? What would you say your main concern was coming out of Saturday? Uh, the, just the operation, the operation. We got in the stadium. Those young kids got in the stadium for the first time. Just get in the stadium, a play clock, real officials, getting plays on and off the field, get personnel groupings on and off the field. Uh, at times early on, we struggled with that in the scrimmage. But they, you know, they, they calmed down and they kept chopping away. I told them, you know, it's easy just to kind of lock up right there and not be able to perform. But they got better as the scrimmage went on and made some plays later. What did you see from Sims? What, how would you evaluate his performance? Uh, steady. I mean. It, was it his, his best day? It wasn't his best day, but it was far from his worst day. And you know, the way Jeff does it, he just goes about each day and just wakes up, has a strategy, attacks it, and gets better, tries to get better every single day. So he came back you know, yesterday, got in the film room, had good meetings. Uh, he's, he's becoming such a, uh, a leader on our offense, just from not just you know, do what he does, but just a vocal leader as well. So come out today, had a, you know attack today. So he's in a good spot. Coach, good, good. The guy like Thomas Magnoni, maybe have his role expanded more instead of just an inline tight end, but just after Xavier leaves. He's a big body out there. He's athletic. He just, is his role maybe expanding to more of like a receiver? Yeah, and everybody's role. Uh, you know, Coach challenged us this weekend. Just, you know, like don't just, we said when we got here, it's a positionless offense. So you know, just because you have running back or tight end besides your name, that doesn't mean you can't play other spots on the field. So I get, like I said earlier, we're not going to come in here and just say, well, the tight ends play in line and, the, and, and we're going to have two really good players standing on the sideline and not playing. We're going to adjust the offense however we need to to maximize the talent level we have on offense. I know you don't have an answer to this question as it relates to the waiver, but if, but if Rick Gilbert is not how much does that change your offense to the positive? Uh, for the pause, I mean, he's a special talent, you know. And uh, but you know, all we can do is just get the guys ready that we know are going to be there. And you know, Arik, he's he's unbelievable. Comes in every day, tries to learn, practices hard, and he brings his you know he brings his positive to the offense as well. How would you size up uh, Chuba and Heinrich and, and how they've done and, and where that competition's at? I guess it's cool with them. I mean, our quarterback room's really you know the meetings and stuff have been great. Uh, they compete every single day. Each one of them have different skill sets and different traits that they bring to the table. So, you know, you can you can game plan things and you can have plays ready for them to be able to attack a defense. You know, maximizing what they do and what they do best. So, uh, we have, we're not ready to really name a number two guy right now, but you know, we feel that both of them could go into a game and help us win. Maybe as a third, do you need a specific number two, or the way you're explaining it, could, could you have like sort of a code? Yeah, I'm not ready to say co or anything like that, but I'm, I'm pleased with their development thus far and where they are in the offense. Who among those freshman receivers do you feel like is sort of tackling the, the learning curve and, and on the right side of it? Uh, we're pleased with all of them because, you know, they're freshmen, first of all. This is a whole new ball game. Like, they think that they're, they've been playing football for the last couple of years, and then they get here and like, it's a total different animal. So they're all, you know, we're very pleased with all of them. But, you know, you look at like Jalen Lloyd and Doss, those guys have, have made some plays and uh, been able to go out there and function and, you know, from a physical standpoint and an athletic standpoint, make some plays and own their own. The running back room? Uh, pleased with it. I mean, hard runners, again, just kind of like the backup quarterbacks. I mean, those guys can do a little bit of everything. You got 
a guy that can you know run option routes, get the ball on the perimeter, breakaway speed. You got guys that will run through your face. You got some guys that can shifty within the line of scrimmage, can run through arm tackles. So we have you know three or four guys that that are playing really well right now. Uh, and I'm very pleased with the room. You mentioned Jaden Dawson. Is he a guy when you first got here? You're pretty excited about his skill set. You always talk about a position on his offense, and that's sort of what he did in high school. Yeah, I mean, just his physical, you know, his physical traits, athletic traits, speed, and everything. Uh, his power, you know, it gives him a chance to do some things early on. Marcus, what have you seen from the line and your backs in terms of like defensive recognition? Because Tony West's defense obviously does a lot of different things for you. What have you seen from them in terms of growth and communicating and what they're seeing? Uh, I mean, it's it's literally it's like trying to solve a puzzle every snap. I mean, there's different things coming at him. I think they, you know, Coach Raola does an unbelievable job of, you know, preparation, you know, for just for practices, just for walkthroughs, just to make sure that we don't have a lot of, you know, unblocked players running through the line of scrimmage. So I'm really pleased, especially coming out of the scrimmage with our pass protection up front. I think they did a really nice job of sorting that stuff out. It's not easy, but it's a credit to this, their hard work. I mean, they're, they're having to do a lot of extra work just to make sure that they can identify where everybody is on that defense. Uh, I mean, he doesn't flinch. He's like, you know, everybody that Coach Rule puts in the staff, like, we're not going to flinch. We're just going to say what's next to move on. Uh, you know, all we can do is – all we can control is what we can control. So, you know, we just woke up the next morning, went to work, found our guys, started, you know, coaching them and develop them. And I, I think Garrett's done a really nice job of doing that. It hasn't changed anything that we do day to day and how we coach these guys. How much more do you feel like you need to do situations like third down and red zone? How much have you guys done so far? How much more uh, Coach Rule's a master at that. Like he's really, really, really good at just, you know, he'll throw the ball down just at a, you know, just at any moment in practice and yell out a situation. So, I think that you know I'm never going to say we're we're so I don't want to jinx ourselves saying oh we're way ahead or anything. But we've done a ton of situational work, and I feel good where we are. And uh, you know we got got a couple weeks here before we get going for real to even improve on what we've got done thus far. But Coach Rule does a really nice job of preparing us for every situation known to man. How far? From the time that you maybe started kind of developing this group of guys in the spring till now, where have you guys come the furthest? Uh, I think just as a just a brotherhood and a camaraderie on offense. I think there's a lot of trust uh, with our offensive line. I think there's a lot of trust that's developing with Jeff. I think Jeff's developing a lot of trust with you know certain players on the team that he can trust to get open at certain times of the game. So I think just the brotherhood and the camaraderie is just you know you see it growing every day and. The guys are making an attempt to, to make it grow. It's not, you know, they're not fighting it. They're out there trying to, you know, learn other people's names, learn things about families. Like, you know, Coach Rule in team meeting stuff at night challenges them, you know, learn to, you know, talk to other people. Don't just sit with the same people all the time. So just the brotherhood, I think, is improving daily. Is it turned to Minnesota? Is that after this, this, this week, you kind of start to begin to think about attacking their defense instead of your own? I swear I'm not trying to be the coach talk, but literally I'm just trying to get, I'm trying to get to the meeting. What's next? Watch the film, correct the issues, and then when Coach Rule opens the door and says, "Hey, let's start on 8:31," then we'll start on 8:31. But till now, we're just we're just working on improving ourselves as coaches and as players. There's still a lot of playing time decisions you feel like that are still left to be made with this group. Like I think we all kind of know Jeff's going to be the starter. Are there a lot of decisions still to be made among among the offensive players? Uh, I think you know the running backs are competing every day. The wideouts are competing every day. The tight ends are competing every day. You know, I think th there's a there's a healthy competition amongst our offense that's going to allow us to you know iron sharpen iron get better every single day. So uh, I'm not I'm, we're not ready to sit here and give you a final depth chart, but you know there's still a lot of competition out there for some spots. Thank you guys.